Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time passing through, please like, subscribe, share if you like what I talk about. Um, for those of you who've already subscribed, the usual thank you for your support, your comments and yeah, the interaction that we have. Um, basically, um, this video was inspired by an article in The Guardian I read this morning. Um, I'm going to make it a short video because my daughter is taking me out for a birthday dinner. So um, I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. But basically, I was wondering what I would do if England didn't want me anymore. If they said we're going to revoke your citizenship and what would I do? I know that when I lived in the States, I wanted to come back to England. I lived there for about 11 years. I was working there. I was pretty comfortable. But England, as far as I was concerned, was where I was raised, is where I was educated. And people can say about your heritage, my heritage being Jamaican, or, you know, going back to Africa and English people or white people not wanting me. But the fact of the matter is, is that I was born here. I was educated here. I grew up with the British culture, regardless of how the Jamaican part of me kind of seeps in every now and then. It's bound to influence me. But the fact of the matter is, is that I feel that England, which is where I was born, I have a lot of common with, I understand how it works. And when you're living in a country or where you, when you, whether or not you're raised in a country, it's understanding the dynamics of that culture that is more important than anything else. If England was to revoke my passport and send me off to Jamaica, I would kind of understand the innuendos and stuff like that. I mean, I went there. The mosquitoes showed that they did. They that they. Sorry, the mosquitoes showed me that I was a foreigner because I got bitten left, right, and centre. But by and large, I did. I didn't feel uncomfortable, but I wanted to get back to England. I wanted to have that sense of what I'm used to, what I'm accustomed to. And we can all, change is good for everyone. It helps us develop, it helps us to grow. But if, you're, if it's forced change, it can be quite unsettling, it can be quite uncomfortable. So where am I going with this? Uh, where I'm going with this is because I, in the article in The Guardian I saw this morning, um, it said 120 um, people had had their citizenship revoked since, uh, since 2016. Um, even more so, it's been more rampant since 9-11, but just in the last three years, 120 people have had their citizenship revoked by the UK government, by the passport office. The majority of them are Muslim. I don't know what the rest of them are. The article didn't say they were all Muslim. It just said the majority of them were. And it could have been all of them for all I know. I don't know where they get their statistics from. But the fact of the matter is, the citizenship has been taken away from people who are born in the country. Now, Shamima Begum, she was one of them, and she was the first one I knew about. I didn't know about all the others. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, she was under 18. She'd been in um, wherever she went to for more than three years. And they say that she was groomed. They say she was radicalized, whatever it is. Sometimes um, we have to try and understand why these things happen to people. For example, you know, when you meet somebody online and um, a man, say for a female in particular, it does happen to men, but they cajole you into giving them money. They tell you a whole heap of sweet stories. And depending on your background and your upbringing and whether or not you've been abused or whether or not you've been neglected or whether or not you're needy or whether or not you need reassurance, somebody can come online and get you to do things you wouldn't ordinarily do because they're pressing all the right buttons. 
I think similarly, that's how grooming works. Grooming targets people who are vulnerable, who have been abused, who may have been in a, situ in a family situation where they're isolated or neglected. And so they take advantage of those people and they manage to cajole them into doing things that they wouldn't ordinarily do. I'm not saying that's what happened with Shemaima Begum. I don't know the background. I don't know what happened there. But the fact of the matter is, is that she left and she, her citizenship was revoked. But she couldn't get Bangladeshi um, citizenship because they don't recognise it. They don't recognise her as being Bangladeshi. So she's stateless. And, in you know, that is an illegal act. But they can justify it by talking about national security and stuff like that. A lot of people, when they hear about Muslims being... Um, having their citizenship revoked, the first thing they say is, oh, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. It's better that they're not here. You know, I don't want to be bombed up in a train. I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. But they don't know the true circumstances of it. People associate Muslims all the time with terrorism. We don't know if it's because it's media um, hype. We don't know if it's actual. We do not know. But the fact of the matter is, if you've been naughty or if you've been associated with any kind of Muslim activity or shihadi activity or any kind of um, threat to national security, you get your citizenship revoked. And there's no turning back. There is no turning back. You have been banished. And you're banished and where, whether or not you can stay where you are or whether or not you can go anywhere, you're kind of left in limbo. And so I was trying to think, my goodness, if I was to do something wrong, it's like, you know, with your parents. You know, some people have parents who... Who, who do that to their children. When their children have misbehaved or done something wrong, they say, get out, get out of my house. Don't ever come back. Those children end up on the street. They end up homeless. They end up victims of gangs. They end up in all kinds of unsavory situations. They can't go back because they know their parents don't want them. Even if their parents said it in haste, that child doesn't know that. All that child knows is that their parents have banished them from the home and they are left to their own devices and they are left to whoever is willing to take them on. And, you know, normally they're in a worse position once they've been banished than where they were when they before they were banished. And that's a similar situation with people who've had their citizenships revoked. We do not know the circumstances. We know that some, in some circumstances, we know that they've gone over there and they've had babies and they've got married and, you know, that kind of stuff. And people have been um, jailed for sending them money because it's supporting um, ISIS and all kinds of stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is that these people have been rendered stateless. And how do they get away with it when it's meant to be illegal to make somebody stateless? Well, they get away with it because on the passport, citizenship is a privilege. It's not a right. Now, I don't know if that applies to naturalised citizens, but there again, Shamima Begum was actually born in the country, so she wasn't naturalised, and yet she was able to be revoked. Her citizenship was able to be revoked. I often wonder, you know about white people? White people of white parents, white English people of white parents who have uh, converted into Muslim, there's plenty of them. What would they do with them? Would they still banish them? Or would it make a difference, the fact that they're white? Because I haven't heard of that situation with regard to white people. If there is a situation like that, please let me know because I haven't heard of it. But my point is, is that right or wrong, you know, our citizenship is our identity. And 
you know, regardless, like I'm born here and people will say, you know, you're selling out, you're this and that because you're black and, you know, you're saying that you're in, well, English or British and you, you associate with England and blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is, is that this has been my culture for all the years I've been in this country. And so if I was taken out and put elsewhere, I would feel alienated, I would feel isolated, I would feel insecure, unless, of course, I was with somebody of that country who could show me the ropes and who could tell me what to do and who I felt safe with. But when you're in a country and you do not feel safe, and it's a country that you've gone to but you didn't really mean to stay, and then you're stuck there, you know, how, does, how would that make you feel? If somebody, if you came home because, uh, you know, you'd done something wrong and your mother said, get out, how would you feel? Unwanted, neglected, abandoned? How would you feel? Because it's the same feeling that somebody would have when their citizenship is revoked. And it doesn't just affect those people whose citizenship has been revoked. It affects everybody who has citizenship, because everybody will start thinking, my God, can I have my citizenship revoked? I'm born in this country. Can I have my citizenship revoked? And it makes you wonder on what criteria, on what basis can they revoke your citizenship? Is it as long as you are a person of colour born in the country? you can get your citizenship revoked? Or is it that regardless of your colour and your race, whether you're white, English, of English soil, of English heritage, of English background, that if you associate yourself with ISIS, you can have your citizenship revoked as well? That's what I would like to know. Because otherwise, it is quite discriminatory. If it is just one race or one set of people that have their their um, their pool, their citizenship revoked, um, I think that was all I really wanted to say. Because I'm not like I said, I wanted it to be short and quick. I don't know how long I've been on here, but yeah, I think I've covered the most important thing the only thing is is that you know when they do um render you stateless you're you're palmed off onto another country who may not be in a position to reject you or you know but you lose your rights by being a citizenship you have the right to vote technically whether or not you use it is a different thing you have a right to education you have a right to medical health but when you have um, you have a right to certain benefits, but when you're rendered stateless and that your citizenship is revoked, you're left with no rights, no legal representation. You're just left in the middle of nowhere with nothing. And remember in the Bible they used to do that. They used to banish people to the ends of the city. And they're left to their own devices to fend for themselves. So it's, it's not a great feeling. So if England said to me um, tomorrow, hey, Black Bright, you know, we're taking your passport away. You know, we, we don't want you here anymore. I'd probably make it work because that's the type of person I am. But I'd feel extremely, extremely vulnerable and uncomfortable. So, yeah, I'm just putting it out there, peeps. You can let me have your thoughts. And I know you'll probably say, well, they deserve it. They shouldn't have done this. They shouldn't have done that. We can all be self-righteous. We can always say, oh, we wouldn't do that. Or I wouldn't do that. Or that couldn't happen to me. And they shouldn't have done this. Or they couldn't, I shouldn't have done that. But supposing the world becomes totally, totally unfair and you haven't done anything wrong. And they say to you, you cannot have citizenship anymore. We are taking away your citizenship. How would you feel? Just try to imagine that for one moment. And that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.